Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1, GV Whiskey 1, Good Vibrations. I have another little antenna story for you, a kind of a weird antenna that I built when I lived in the Florida Keys. For a short while, a good friend of mine, now passed on to the next world, QRT on this world, W4QF, Jack, owned a house in the Florida Keys and decided to sell it. Well, it was kind of a tough market back then, so he let me live in that house with zero rent, but he, he made me pay all the utilities and look after the place for him while he found prospective buyers. It took several months for that to happen, and it, I think it was between uh, February and May of 1985. I had my Drake R4A T4X and Johnson Viking Matchbox radios. I still had those back then, and I hadn't been on the air for quite a while. So I decided that I was going to set up a station in that house with an unobtrusive experimental antenna. So I built a 15 meter vertical dipole right on the ocean shore. His house looked over the Atlantic Ocean, sort of in a southeasterly direction in a town in Key Largo called Tavernier. And I lived on a street called Dubonnet Lane. I won't even bother to spell those for you. All the, all the street names in Tavernier were named after various types of drink, uh, alcoholic drinks. And uh, I spent a good deal of time drinking back then. I had what they call the Keys disease. I was a bona fide, full-blown alcoholic by then. But that's beside the point. I did have my sober moments, and I got on the air with that 15-meter vertical dipole set up right on the ocean front. There was a, a, like a little canal that ran along, and then some rocks, and then the Atlantic Ocean, which was usually wave-free, or at least it didn't have breakers, because the, the, the bottom was so shallow for such a long ways out. There was great fishing in the Keys, of course, if you've ever been there. I used to ride a bicycle down almost every other day to a little place that was owned by a Cuban fellow who trapped his own lobsters and then sold them the same day or the next day. And he had them on ice and I could pick them out, uh, I think, while they were still alive. And then I could take them home. No, no, they, he let them die first before I, threw them in the, before I threw them in the boiler or the steamer. I didn't, uh, I didn't burn live lobsters or boil live lobsters. That would have been inhumane. But they were, of course, indescribably delicious, along with screwdriver slushies that I concocted down there, and I got on 15 meters and other bands with that antenna, fed at the center, made out of steel electrical conduit for rigidity, and twisted television TV ribbon, 300 ohm, twin lead, about 60 or 70 feet up to the window where I had the Drake R4A and T4X, and Johnson Viking Matchbox. Relatively low noise environment down there. It was not hurricane season. We didn't have a lot of storms. The weather was sunny quite a lot of the time and breezy almost all of the time. And, I, and he had a front porch swing. And I remember sitting out on that front porch swing overlooking the Atlantic. At night, thunderstorms would bolt their lightning 
over the Gulf Stream, which ran 40 or 50 miles offshore. Thunder showers would form over the Gulf Stream and you could watch the lightning at night, but it didn't seem to pose much of a spherics problem on the radio. Didn't do much nighttime operation on 15 meters, but I had the gall to try the thing on 20 and 10 meters. We did not have the 17 or 12 meter bands at that time, but I did have my extra class license and was licensed as W1GV back then, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. All CW, of course. I ran pretty much the full power that the Drakes had to offer. That was uh, 100 watts, roughly, RF output. And uh, I worked some good DX that way, but it wasn't an exceptional antenna. But it was kind of a novel antenna, and an unusual antenna, somewhat unbalanced because the lower half was closer to the salt water than the upper half. So I'm sure that that feed line radiated somewhat but I didn't pay attention to the SWR on the feed line or worry about any of that stuff. Who can when they're juiced up with screwdriver slushies and eating lobster almost every day? I mean, who cares about SWR, right? I did uh, make sure that the Transmatch let the Drake T4X see a one-to-one -one SWR. But that was my antenna. I had no name for it was just a vertical dipole, 22 feet high, fed in the center. And, uh, well, actually it was 20 feet high and I put a capacitance hat on the top and a capacitance hat on the bottom made out of, I think they were aluminum slats bent at a 90 degree angle at the end and clamped with hose clamps to the, to the steel conduit, something like that. In any case, resonant on the 15 meter band and operated by force feed on the other bands. Even at resonance, the thing would have a four to one standing wave ratio on that twin lead, 300 ohms for the twin lead, 75 ohms or thereabouts as the impedance at the feed point of the antenna. But it was, I guess it was kind of a sad time in my life and yet a fun time. Uh, and I was finishing up a, a book during my sober moments. Kind of what you might call a dream existence, but uh, in a very nice house. I just had to take care of it, keep it clean, pay the water bill and the electric bill. There wasn't any gas heating, so I didn't have to worry about that. There was a little pool about maybe 20, 30 feet long that I could sort of swim in. I do practice my flip turns more than anything else. Unheated, so the water was pretty cold, but it was a good way to wake up in the morning after an evening out, hanging out in the various uh, taverns in Tavernier. I haven't had a drink since 19... 88 because of the fact that I did become alcoholic. I fully admit that and I managed to overcome that evil disease. Wouldn't dream of having a drop of the stuff today, especially seeing as I'm taking prescription medication that would guarantee seizures if I did. Well, not especially because of that, especially because one drink and I'm a dead man. You know, the, you know the drill if you have the Keys disease. But I, as far as I knew, was the only ham radio operator in the area. I'm sure there were others. But I spent, I, I pretty much kept to myself, except for a few interesting contacts and DXing, mostly on 15 meters. Worked pretty well at that latitude at that time. Stangibilisco W1GV saying 73. And so long, which then is now. 
translates in my native fist to da 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 da. -da.